So in this lecture, we're going to examine the motion of objects on inclines and inclined planes. We're going to examine exactly what makes our objects move when placed on an inclined plane. And we're going to look at the different types of forces that our objects feel when they are placed on the inclined plane. So let's begin by looking at the following illustration. Suppose we have a frictionless inclined plane with some angle theta to our horizontal, to our ground. And suppose we take some rectangular block and we place this block on our inclined plane. So notice when we initially place the block we place the block stationary. That means we don't give it a push upward or downward. We place it stationary down. So what happens if our block is indeed frictionless and there's an angle theta? Well, our block begins to move downward with some velocity v. So let's recall what Newton's first law of motion tells us. According to Newton's first law of motion, a stationary object begins to move because a net force acts on that object. In other words, a stationary object will not move unless there's a net force acting on that object. And that means that because this block begins to move, because it begins to accelerate down the inclined plane with some velocity v, that means some net force is acting on that object. But my question is, what is this net force? What creates this net force and what pulls our object downward? Well, recall that obviously this can't be any physical force. It can't be any physical contact force. In other words, there is nothing actually touching our block. There is nothing forcing our block downward by actually pushing, by contacting our block. So this must be some invisible force. And what invisible force do we know? Well, we know the force of gravity. So let's examine this illustration here. The force of gravity acts straight downward on our block. So this red force, this red vector, is our force due to gravity. So, <coughs> so our force of gravity is pulling downward on our block. So that means this force it, uh, by itself does not actually cause our block to move because this force is pointing straight downward. But notice if we look at our ground, at our inclined plane surface as the x-axis and this as the y-axis, then we can break our force, this vector, into its y and x component where this is our y component and this is our x component. And this angle in between this vector and this vector is our angle that we have with the inclined plane. So this angle here is this angle in this triangle. In other words, this guy is Fg or the force due to gravity times sine theta. Because sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And in this triangle, this angle is our opposite angle. So this is our opposite angle. And our hypotenuse is simply this guy. So we're basically saying that this vector, its magnitude, is Fg or force due to gravity times the sine of this angle. Likewise, we could also say that this angle is F due to our gravity times our cosine theta. So, and we see the following that this is the force and not this force by itself is the force responsible for pulling our block down. In other words, yes, gravity is, a, is responsible for pulling our block down, but not this force of gravity. It's this force of gravity, so it's a little bit less than gravity. And how much less depends on what our angle is and on what sine theta is. So, once again, this is our horizontal component of our gravitational force. F sine theta is the net force acting on the object to accelerate it down the inclined plane. And likewise, our vertical component, this component, is simply the normal force of our object. In other words, let's recall what the normal force is. Normal force is the force that our ground exerts on the object and it points upward and we can represent it F as F subscript N. And since this block is not moving downward or upward, that means these two forces are exactly equal. And these two forces 
come from one of the laws of motion that tells us that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction and this is the law or the third law of motion Newton's third law of motion so in, if we want to find what the normal force of our block is our normal force is F of G cosine theta so the force due to gravity times cosine theta so in part B we're going to look at the following example but before we look at this example, I want to make sure you know exactly where our vertical component and horizontal component comes from. So let's examine the following diagram. Let's zoom in. So let's examine the following plane once more. Let's say we have a frictionless inclined plane and our rectangular object, say a box, is sliding downward our plane. And let's say our plane makes an angle of theta to our ground. So a net force, a net force due to gravity, this red vector, will point directly downward. It pulls down on our object and this vector makes a 90 degree uh, angle with our ground. In other words, if we extend this vector all the way down to our ground, it will always make a 90 degree angle with our ground. This is always true. So now suppose I want to find out what my x and y component is. Why? Well, because it's the x component that, act, that is actually pulling on my object. Not this force, not the y component, but it's actually the x component that's pulling down, causing my object to accelerate downward with some velocity. So let's now say that instead of this being my x-axis and this being my y-axis, I change my plane so that this is in fact my x-axis and this is in fact my y-axis. So that now my block is moving along the x-axis and the normal force is pointing along the y-axis. The normal force is simply the force that our ground creates on our object and it points in this direction. So our normal force is pointing along upward on the y-axis. So, now suppose I want to find what my components are of this net force. So I take this triangle and I place it here and I zoom in on it. So, let's look at this guy. Remember, this is simply my net force due to gravity. So let me put down a G here so you know what I'm talking about. So, this is the force or net force due to gravity. And this is my hypotenuse in this triangle. Now, this angle up here is actually the same angle here. Because if you rotate this, you'll see that that's exactly right. So, this is my same angle theta that I had here that formed an angle with the ground. So now I want to find what the magnitude of this side is and this side is knowing my angle and knowing my magnitude of this force. So suppose I know what my angle is and suppose I know what my force is. I want to find what this guy is and this guy. Well, according to my trig rules, this guy is simply this guy times sine of theta because opposite over hypotenuse is simply sine. So, this guy is sine of the angle theta multiplied by my force times g. So, this is what my magnitude is of this uh, x component. This guy is the same exact thing as this guy, right? I just drew this guy here for convenience for you, got, for you to see that this is in fact a triangle. But this magnitude and this magnitude and directions are exactly the same. They're both pointing along the x-axis and they have the same exact magnitude. So I simply took this and placed it here. So the magnitude of this force that's actually pulling our object down, that's accelerating it, has the magnitude of F g times sine theta, where this g is simply a subscript. It doesn't mean force times gravity, it means force subscript g. It's the force due to gravity. Now let's find what this is. Well, that guy is simply our cosine of the angle multiplied by our net force due to gravity. So f subscript g. So this is the magnitude of our 
uh, normal force, except it points in the opposite direction. So, if in a problem we want to find the normal force, we simply find what this is. So, now let's zoom out and let's look at the following problem. So, let's move on to this problem. Suppose we have a box that is moving down a frictionless inclined plane with an angle of 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees. If the mass of the box is 10 kilograms, so the mass of this box traveling downward is 10 kilograms, what is our acceleration of our box? So in order to find my, my acceleration, I have to find what the force is that's pulling on my box. So I want to find this green force. I want to find my X component force. But in order to find my X component first, I first must find the magnitude of this force. So if I find the magnitude of this force and I know what my angle is, which in this case is simply 30, I could solve for my acceleration. So let's find what my force is. Remember, force is simply the magnitude or the amount of kilograms multiplied by my acceleration of gravity, right? This is what this vector corresponds to. And so the, <coughs> the magnitude of this force, our hypotenuse in this triangle, is 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second second. And that's simply 98.1 newtons. So this is my force. And now I want to find what my force is that's actually pulling on my object. To find that, I simply take my magnitude of this guy and multiply it by sine of the angle. So, F times sine theta equals, I take 98.1 from my first step and I multiply it by sine 30. Now, sine 30 is simply one half. So, I multiply 98.1 by one half and I get 49. 0.05. So this is my force that's pulling on my object, that's pulling on my box. And it's, <coughs> and it's exactly half of the actual net force that's pulling on my box. So that means to find my acceleration, I just simply recall my second law of motion, F equals MA. So since F is 49.05 and M is 10 uh, kilograms, I simply divide both sides by 10. So 49.05 equals MA equals 10 kilograms times acceleration, divide by 10, and I find my acceleration to be 4.905 meters per second second. So the velocity of this box changes by 4.905 every second. 